Jack. Yes. Hey, man. Hey. So, you know, there's this latest Star Talk book that yes. Lindsay Walker and I wrote. To Lindsay's Infinity behind, and Beyond. Yeah, she's behind the scenes in all these recordings, of course. Producer extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, we spend a large part of a chapter exploring how empty space actually is. Yeah. yeah. You can get a sense it's empty because it's there's these big well, vast voids and things, all right? And but I don't think people really feel how em- emotionally empty <laughs> Oh, they really? came out wrong. No, yeah, came I came out wrong. I was going to say, yeah, space, space is just sitting around just like, I, I, I want to connect with people. I want to. I just, I don't understand why I just can't seem to make that kind of tight fit with anybody. I don't. It's, oh. it's, it's tough in space, being space. It's, it's, God, it just seems like no matter how much comes into me, I just still feel so empty. <laughs> I mean, new stars are happening all the time, but still, I'm just, it just doesn't do it. What do I have to do to have some sense of accomplishment or fulfillment in my life? I, I'm sorry, Space, your t- our time is up. Maybe we can pick this up next week. <laughs> so let's take a look. We have eight planets and okay. they go out, you know, four or five billion miles, but there's only eight of them. Right? right, so clearly that that's pretty empty, right? Yeah. But you know there are these asteroids, right? And most of them are collected in this flattened zone, yeah, between Mars and Jupiter, right? Okay, because it's a flattened zone, we call it a belt. There are comets that come into the sun from all directions, right? And if you projected where they come from. It's a spherical region around the solar system, and that we wouldn't call that a belt no. because it's a spherical region. We call that a cloud. A cloud, right? So the Oort and cloud. The Oort cloud. Uh, Jan Oort, who's a Dutch astronomer, so he saw how many comets were coming in from every direction, and right. and comets are moving fast when they're near the sun, all right. And when they go farther away from the sun, they move slower and slower and slower. So when he did the, when he ran the math on the, before computers, by the way, he ran the math, he concluded there must be billions of these comets way out there in these long loop orbits that come around. Right. And they'll spend most of their time far away from the sun because that's when they're moving the slowest. Okay. Right. Pluto is the most significant member of the Kuiper belt of comets. Right. So that's a belt because it's a flattened, flattened disc. region around around right. the sun. All right. 1801, the first asteroid is discovered. And uh, people are excited because they think it's a planet. Right. They discover it orbiting in this big gap, suspiciously big gap between Mars and Jupiter. People were saying, "There's got to let's just keep looking. There's got to be something there. It's a bigger gap than you think should be there given the distances between other between planets. The other planets. Exactly. So they found series that we found a planet. And then they found another one. And then they found another one. Okay. And another one. The first four asteroids, Ceres, Pallas, Vesta, and Juno. Ceres is the goddess of harvest. And that's the root to the word cereal. Wrong. Okay. I yeah. Cool. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So anyhow, once we started discovering many, many, many more of these, we realized, wait a minute, they're all in the same swath of real estate. They don't sort of own their own space. And actually, they're really tiny. Right. They're so tiny through a telescope, they look like a star. Stars are so far away, you can't right. see any size for them. But these are right here with us. They're right here with us. So they look like stars, but they're not stars. Right. They're right. asteroids. Well, how many are there? Well, we started counting hundreds initially, then thousands, wow. then tens of thousands then hundreds of thousands. Right now we're up over a million known asteroids with orbits and and existence in our solar system. Right. And one of them has my name on it. No. You didn't know that? I did not. You did not know that? I'm serious, I did not. Okay, We've been together a long time. (laughs) How did I not? You have your own asteroid? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, I don't mean to brag or anything. By the way, there are a lot of asteroids, so there's a, there's a limit to how big your head can get. 
which you get an asteroid named after you. Just saying. I, I don't okay. know about that. That's not bad. I mean, I wouldn't mind. I mean, can you see it? Now that that's the thing. <laughs> well, I double checked that it's not headed towards Earth, or it's not on an Earth crossing orbit. Yeah, see, you, you, you don't want to be that asteroid. Yeah, you don't want to be that asteroid. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> Neil Tyson is coming to kill you all. <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's asteroid one three one two three Tyson. One three one two three Tyson. Yeah, that's that's what it is. That's cool, man. Okay, so I have a now, name. Wait, it, wait a minute. There's, now, there's just very what, quickly. What? Can anybody get their own asteroid? I mean, is or is that something where like somebody bestowed this honor upon you? It's not one of those things where it's just like one of these services where it's just like you too can name a star. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Give it to I your like, girlfriend for Valentine's I, Day. I, name I like a we, star. You use the salesman voice, right? <laughs> Name a star. Right. Uh, so um, the person who discovers the asteroid right. has the power to name it after any person, place, or thing. Oh, so that's cool. So somebody found this asteroid that you know, yes. and they were just like, hey, Neil, I'm going to name this asteroid. Wow, that I'm going to say. Yeah. So that's that's an is, honor. It's honor. That's yeah. more than an honor. That's like yeah. that's like naming a child after somebody. Oh. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. I mean, honestly, that asteroid's going to be there long after we're all gone. Your kid's going to die. That's true. So if that's you, true. If you named your kid after me, it'd be like, okay, that's an honor for like what seventy years, three <laughs> score and ten. All right. Yeah. It's not like your kid's okay. going to live forever. You know, I was named after Chuck Nice. No, but that asteroid yeah, will asteroid be, there be there for generations to come. Long that's after I'm dead. That's a serious honor. There, there it is. Okay. So that's one of the asteroids in the asteroid belt. Okay. There, we know of a million there's probably as many as a billion depends on how small you you want to what you, count what you're gonna, okay you're gonna count all right all right so now watch that swath of real estate mm -hmm. is so large okay you let's ask the question what is the average distance between asteroids okay that's a very honest that's question an to honest ask question yeah. now if you if you base it on movies all right. Well, that that yeah. average distance would be around uh, six and a half feet. <laughs> that's um, right, because you are because you that's what, navigating. That's how you gotta navigate the spaceship to make the it look spaceship. cool. It doesn't look cool otherwise, yeah. right? And yeah. the, and the, and the, and the rocks are banging off the side of the, exactly. the ship and jostling the ship. Right. And, and even in Star Trek, well, Captain, we're entering a star, uh, uh, an asteroid, an asteroid field. field. Right. And there they go. And so, yeah, this is this is cinematic trope. What's going on as you enter an asteroid field? Okay. okay. I got a feeling right now. I got a feeling that you are about to ruin another cinematic constant or 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 uh, uh, a tradition. Another cinematic tradition is about to bite the dust, courtesy of Neil deGrasse Tyson. Why I'm you just, got why you got bill it like that? I just no. Nope. Why you gotta make me look? Why you got? Why you? Why you do that? Something telling me, man. <laughs> okay, the average distance between mm -hmm. asteroids in the asteroid belt, okay, is about six hundred thousand miles. Oh my god! <laughs> so, so basically, you're like, okay, so you can't see it, but over there to the left. If we're not careful, in about a month, we might hit that asteroid. <laughs> Imagine showing that. <laughs> showing that in the movie, right? right? That's the movie. That's the new movie version. Okay? Captain, we've entered the asteroid belt. Oh, my God. Well, <clears throat> what is the potential damage, number one? Um, I don't know how to say this, Captain, but uh, we can't see any of them. Right. <laughs> they're too far away. They're too far away. <laughs> How shall we maneuver the ship? There's no need to. I'm, I'm actually, actually going to go take a nap now, Captain. I'm, I'm going to go lay down because... That's how that's how much danger an asteroid belt actually poses. You know? So, so what's interesting is our first space... We have four... Well, five... Well, more than that. I'm, I'm old enough to remember the first four spaceship to go beyond Mars in the solar system to reach the outer planets. So if you want to go to the outer planets, you have to cross the asteroid belt. Right. Okay. We did this calculation. 
All right? right. Early on, Pioneer 10 and 11, twin spacecraft, first to first to have enough energy to leave the solar system, but they're not as famous as Voyager 1 and 2. Right. All four of those spacecraft went through the asteroid belt and nothing happened to them. And if it did, NASA would have been the laughing stock of all <laughs> spacecraft of space <laughs> programs. <laughs> Ever because so, <laughs> there's 600,000. How could you hit something? <laughs> you can't. If you tried to hit something, you couldn't hit it. You gotta try. It's, it's like when my dad took me to learn how to drive in the parking lot of the supermarket, and uh -huh. the supermarket is closed, and I hit a lamppost. And he no, went, you didn't. What? How? What? what? How could you? There's, <laughs> there's nothing here but lines on the ground and this one lamppost, and you hit it. How did you hit the lamppost? Okay. So, yeah, I'm just trying to get real here. I mean, so that's all I'm saying. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. That's terrible. So, so that's why we, we, we don't worry about crossing the asteroid belt. We just no. send stuff through. It's not even a thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, honestly. Oh, my God. And once again, I can say once again, Star Wars has it completely wrong when it comes to the science of space. One, star, thank you, Star Wars, for your, consi your assiduous consistency where you just get it wrong every time. <laughs> So anyway, that was a long lead up to that one little bitty fact there. But oh, you learned but that I have so an asteroid. I have an asteroid named after me. Yeah. That was so much right. fun. But actually, and that's the cool, the coolest thing. Well, actually, those are two cool things we learned. One, you are never getting hit by an asteroid in the asteroid belt. That's number one. Number okay. one. Okay. And number two, two Tyson three two one. No, well, uh, it's one three one two three Tyson. One three one two three Tyson. Which they, means at the time that was named for me. There was in the tens of thousands of named asteroids. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. But gotcha. now we're like in the high hundreds of thousands getting named. And so there's asteroids named after, like I said, pers people, places, and things. If you discover enough asteroids, you can name one after your pet. Um, right. Yeah. There you know. You go. So there's an I, asteroid it, somewhere named Fluffy. <laughs> Fluffy 31123. <laughs> there's, there's an asteroid uh, named Santa. That was kind of cool. The Santa World. And, and I have a friend of mine who observed, who was at a telescope on Christmas Day, and he made sure to observe asteroid Santa on Christmas Day. Oh, just, man. Just that's for cool. the grins of it. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's a cool thing to know, though. Once again, this has been a Star Talk explainer. This time, how crowded is the asteroid belt? Thanks for being there, Chuck. <laughs> a pleasure. And Neil deGrasse Tyson, as always, keep looking up.